What's up everybody and thanks for tuning in to the third episode of the day. This is an unexpected episode of Lockdown 23 and 1. And this just so happens to be about a video that I already made. I just uh, deleted it. I wanted to get rid of it because 2,000 views and nobody's even told me that the audio is messed up. And the reason how I noticed it was because... Some hating dude left some comment, and I, I appreciate the view in the comment, Chief. Whoever it was, I forget their name. And uh, But he caused me to look at the video again. I just wanted to watch it and reminisce. It was like the second video I made when I started. It was how I went to prison. And the audio was completely jacked up. I didn't know what I was doing. And so I'm going to go ahead and tell the story again. If you haven't already seen it, I hope you enjoy. So... I went to prison for the first time for defending myself on my father's property. I was living with my parents. I believe I was 17 at the time. Um, I, I was always getting into dirt at that age, between like 14 and up. When I got to like high school, I really became a serious criminal, okay? I was doing some very serious crimes out there in the streets, stuff that would have me in there for life, okay? In prison for life. And I, I thank the Lord every day that I never got found guilty for 99% of the stuff that I did, okay? I was really spared. Really spared. So, uh, anyways, let's go ahead and jump quickly into the story. Uh, it was all this... The reason why I went to prison was all over a female, okay? A female uh, that happened to have a boyfriend or who are, uh, you know, friend with benefits, whatever you want to call it. I don't know what the heck he was to her, but... You know, he obviously got a little jealous of whatever's going on. Okay, so I was talking to this girl, uh, you know, you know, nothing major, not no serious relationship or anything, and uh I guess her man or something got jealous of me or whatnot. I, I really honestly don't know what got him so worked up to come over there to my house and try to do something, okay? Uh this guy uh, later on, I found out, you know, he, he moves weight. He, he's a dealer of uh, powder and stuff like that. And, you know, long story short, he, so he came to my house, okay? So he came to my house. Uh, the girl was in the car. And I couldn't, I couldn't see who was in the car or whatnot. I, uh, but I walked up to the car. It was a strange-looking car. I've never seen it before. And uh, I was in my front yard smoking a cigarette. And this guy came up to my house with two other guys and the girl in the car of course uh, when he got out the car I could tell immediately that he wanted he wanted to they wanted to jump me man I just knew I just knew it and to this day I, I honestly don't know what got him so angry something the girl said to him I'm sure she lied to him but anyways he came at me over this girl and what she said to him and he brought two homeboys. And uh, when they got out the car, you know, a bunch of beer cans fell out in, my, in the driveway of my parents' house. I knew what time it was, man. I can I can see it already. I've been in enough fights, enough jumpings. I've seen enough guns and stuff in my short period of criminal activities to understand when someone wants to beat the hell out of me, okay? So, with that being said, you know, I had lots of friends with guns. Uh, I never really carried too many guns myself unless I was going to do a job, okay? A job meaning doing a, crim a heist, any kind of crazy stuff that I was doing that needed a gun. But, for the most part, I never carried a gun. I didn't live in a neighborhood uh, that really considered me to have to carry a gun everywhere I went. Uh, I never cared about carrying a gun, like I said, unless I was doing some crimes. So... I did happen to have uh, a weapon on me at all times in my vehicle or it would be hanging from my belt buckle just in case of an emergency I would have to whip that blade out and shank a couple people up. Uh, it was a blade, it was a gift given to me by my uncle and I believe it was from Columbia. It was a black stainless steel, looked like a, looked like a combat knife. It was about 10 inches long and you know about 3 inches wide. It was a big freaking knife, okay? Uh, at this time, I didn't have it on me, but it was close to me. It was near, it was by the garage of my house, and that's where I was smoking my cigarette. Uh, I happened to have taken it off of me before I went in the house. 
So, um, this guy gets out the car with the two guys, and they start to surround me. And this one guy, of course, uh, that was obviously the girl's, uh, lover or whatever, uh, he came at me first, you know, and, uh, well, they all started surrounding me, and that's, I kind of ran, okay, I ran to get my weapon, because I'm not getting jumped on my property, okay, so I went and got the, got the knife, and I put it behind my back, and I walked up on them, you know what I mean, just, just walk, walk back, and they knew that I had some kind of weapon, they sensed it, but they didn't care, okay, they didn't care at all. I didn't want no trauma. I didn't want no uh, trouble for real, man. I was just chilling out at my house. But I was prepared to be trained to go if it need be. So, it needed be, that's for sure. Uh, this guy, once I started walking back towards him, you know, they stopped a little bit in their tracks and whatnot. And I got him to back up a little bit. And finally, the guy that, you know, was sleeping with the girl or whatever, he came at me. He swung one punch. And... When he swung, I ducked under his fist, and with my knife in my hand, I went to go like I'm going to tackle him in like a UFC ba uh, match or something, you know, tackle him, scoop him up, but I didn't scoop him up. When I went to tackle him or bear hug him, I stabbed him twice in the back, two or three times. I really can't remember to tell you the truth, but it was more than once, and it was, it was pretty vicious, man. Um... It felt like stabbing butter, okay? I really honestly didn't feel a thing. It was such a smooth feeling like, go get a knife and put it in some butter. That's exactly what it felt like. I mean, it didn't hit no bones or nothing. It did make a weird sound when I pulled out the knife on one of the times. It sounded like a suction sound, like a, uh, you know, like a bag underwater or something like, you know, I, I can't even describe it, but uh, it was a crazy sound, and I really didn't understand think I stabbed him until I saw the blood on my knife and you know uh, family said there wasn't no blood on the ground but I saw blood I don't know where it might have went uh, there was blood all in his car because uh, after I stabbed him it took him a second he was really he was tweaked out on something because I stabbed him three times with a huge knife in the back and this guy was still trying to rumble man and his homeboys I could tell they couldn't believe it he was even still standing so um you know, I'm glad I did what I did, okay? Because if I didn't, anything could have happened, man. I mean, one of his homeboys' name was uh, Rhino, man. I mean, come on. The guy's freaking big. He's he's a big dude. He would have he beat me down by himself, you know? They didn't need two other people. So uh, I stabbed him up, and that pretty much kept me safe throughout the rest of the night. But, you know, his homeboys backed up. They are about to leave, and then... They saw he was still fighting and stuff, so they stayed around, and they got him, and he got in the car, and they drove off, okay? I saw the blood on my knife. I thought I was going to, I thought he was going to die. I honestly did. So I went to my mama's house, and I uh, poured bleach all over the blade, and I winged that sucker across my neighbor's backyards. Uh, I don't know where it landed, but, you know, later on, the cops searched it. I think they found it in the pool or something of my neighbor's uh, backyard. But anyways, so yeah, the guy goes, they all leave, and um, they go to the hospital, and that's when they, these guys that try to start stuff on my family's property, on, in our front yard, they press charges on me. He got the girl to say that I followed them to a stoplight, pulled the girl out by her hair, and put a gun to him and her's head, and told him to get out the car, and get in my car, Okay. Man, I'll tell you what, if I was found guilty for the, I beat the charge of abduction later on down the road, but if I was found guilty for that charge, man, I'd still be in there eating ramen noodle sandwiches right now, okay? So I thank the Lord every day for that as well. I mean, it was a very scary time in my life. I was facing 50 years, in, over 50 years in prison. Uh, later on down the road, you know, I went through the court trials, I beat the abduction, uh, I got my charge for malicious wounding got lowered to unlawful wounding, okay, which is actually a maximum of five years, and if I remember correctly, I had the right to defend myself, but I used too much force. Uh, I'm pretty sure that is what the judge told me and what unlawful wounding really means, so I got spared, man, I really did. 
in my eyes, I probably could have gotten a little more time, and but I'm thankful, you know what I mean? Or actually, I could have gotten no time at all because it happened on my property. But for the most part, you know, um, that's why I went to prison. I defended myself over three guys trying to jump me. Who knows if they had a gun or anything, man. And, you know, the guys I was dealing with back then always had guns. You know, gunplay, man. They love to play with guns. So, yeah, there you go. That's why I went to prison for the first time. And, you know, I really hope in the future, if I have any kind of audio qualities with my videos or any kind of mishaps in the editing, let me know, man. Because that thing was on there for like a month and a half. And a lot of people, 2,000 people have seen it. And I can't believe no one said anything about the audio being bad. Anyways, so this is the third video of the day. If you haven't hit that like and subscribe button, man, you better go ahead and do it now because, uh, you know, this channel is fresh. I say it all the time. And if you've already seen this video already, I apologize. I don't mean for y'all to be watching something over and be repetitious. But like I said, I had to fix the video. And it really stunk because I had to get rid of those 2,000 views. Uh, I deleted the video and I'm going to have to re-upload this thing into my... Uh, video list and put it underneath my descriptions and all that in the third but hey you know people make mistakes okay anyways the point of the story here is you know you can go to prison for defend yourself buddy yeah you really can if you shoot someone in the back that was robbing your house or anything like that you're going to prison you do anything to someone in their back they're going to prison okay I mean it's strictly because the judge is looking okay the guy obviously was trying to run or something you know, in my case, he wasn't trying to run. He was fight just started fighting. But I went to prison, man. I might have stabbed someone, yes. Yes, I did. Uh, decently, too. I seen the pictures in the courtroom. There were some pretty bad wounds. Uh, but I always thought that if I'm on my property and someone tries to start stuff with me, I have the right to do anything I want. But I was sadly mistaken. Anyways, I hope y'all learned a little something from this video. Until the next time, I love all y'all. Death I bring. Boom!